Hello again, back to some more building of Battleship Congo. So last time we built this. Um, it's the majority of one of the main turrets. Uh, the only thing that was missing is the barrels with their blast bags and on top um, the uh, anti-aircraft emplacements. So I'm going to leave the anti-aircraft aircraft emplacements until later because they're an absolute pain to build and I want to put them off as long as I can. But I'm going to finish this off um, with the barrels and then I'm going to start work on uh, one of the catapults used to launch the planes from the flight deck. So uh, let's get started with the, um, the barrels first. And these are the beautiful, beautifully turned brass barrel pieces that are replacements for the uh, plastic parts. So let's pull out a couple of those because we need two for for each turret, of course. So these were, I believe, 14 inch guns. Um, and they might look small here, um, but they were very, very big, very, very heavy. Um, at this scale, because it's about one three hundredth, one three fiftieth. So that's, let's say, 25 millimeters long. 25 times 350. Let's just do a quick calculation of that. 25 times 350 equals 87 meters long. I believe that's right. No, 8.7 meters long. 8.7 meters. So that's as big as a small house along one side of it. So that's the length of this. 8.7 ish meters long. Um, that of course doesn't count whatever part of the barrel went inside the turret itself. Now along with that were these blast bags. And these are resin cast parts. A little bit hard to see on the white there I guess. Um, they, I'll show you on the other turret that I have completed. Yes, that's Aki again. Just fed him, of course, and he's wanting more food. Um, so here we've got the barrels attached, and they have these blast bags in the middle here, and they are thick canvas, I believe. And um, they are attached around the opening that the, um, the barrels would raise and lower in order to reload between each firing. Um, and that had to be an opening there so they could do that, but the concussion from the explosion as the um, shell left the barrel would um, be dangerous to the crew inside the turret working on the loading mechanism. And so the barrels had these gun blast bags around them where they connected with the turret. So I'm going to have to... Um, Actually, I don't have to do any drilling because I'm using brass barrels, which are replacements for the plastic parts. And the resin cast blast bags have holes already in them and they will fit because it's designed for the same piece. Ooh, it's a firm fit. But there we go. So yeah, that inserts like that. So a little drop of glue will fix that in place but we'll just uh, pull that out for now. And I'll return that to the storage display cabinet. And um, first we'll need to cut out two of these blast bags for the two barrels that are gonna be used there. All right, let me just check everything's looking good with the stream. Yep, all right, so. Uh, how will I remove this? Oh. Need to take off my headphones to put the uh, magnifying glasses on. Alright, so... Uh, yes, Aki, I hear you. Let me just double check the numbers. It says number one on there. Uh, do, do the instructions say anything about which number? I think they're both identical. There's, there's two runners of these because there's eight barrels, so four blast bags on each. Um, oh, okay, there is, um, they are symmetrical. So you can see here, 
Uh, resin one goes on the left if it's facing away, if the turret's facing away. Actually, I'll, I'll work it with the turret facing me because that's more logical. Uh, so it'll be the resin one, which is this part, will be on the right, and resin two will be on the left. So we'll start with resin one, and I reckon I'll just snip it with my nippers. and then uh, file back the excess. Put that straight back in its bag. Okay, I just fed you. This gets a bit old. All right, so this bit here. Let's straighten that up a little. This bit here needs to come off. All right, let's see if I can snip that. Yep. And do I need to file it a little bit? It's weird, the resin always smells when it's sanded or filed. You'd reckon that once it had cured, there's no volatiles left and it wouldn't smell, but uh, there you go. It does smell a little bit. All right, and you know what? I'm just gonna put the glue straight on. So we'll get a little bit of thick. Oh, hello. Oh, we've got our first spammer. Okay. Excuse me. Let me just turn on. No. Where's my mod controls? Show mod icons. There we go. I should have had that set up already. Okay. Now I can. Ban them. Very good. Sorry about that. It won't happen again so slowly. I'll be able to respond quicker now that I have the mod tools turned on. First spammer. I guess that means uh, I'm worth spamming. I guess everyone's worth spamming them, aren't they? Everyone will get that. All right. Uh, where's my applicator? Oh, there it is. All right, so I'll just put a little bit of glue inside that hole. A little bit more. It was already a tight fit, so I won't need a lot. <coughs> there we go. That's a beautiful, nice, neat join there. No gaps or wiggle. Okay, and let's see how it fits on here. Very well. Yep, I reckon that doesn't need any more filing. So um, I'm just going to glue that straight on. Try and make sure that it's straight. Yeah, it does bend out a little bit. All right, that looks pretty good. Now let's do the other one, and that'll be the tricky bit because we need to make sure that they are parallel. Because, of course, the barrels were parallel because they're both firing in the same direction at the same target. <coughs> Alright. 
I'm going to cut off that excess just because it's easier to reach it if I haven't got that in the way. Okay, put that away. I might need those again until I make the other turrets. Toss out the off, off cuts and a little bit of filing. That was Aki just walking out in disgust because I didn't pay attention to him or give him any food. Any more food, I should say. pretty neat. That's plenty of glue. And there we go. Just check it for fit. bit delicate with the uh, fragile parts on the top here that I need to make sure I don't bend but yep that seems to fit well so glue it on and then we'll be finished with this turret at least for now dislodged the the railing at the front there but I could fix that up okay I didn't put enough glue on apparently skew if there so let's uh, straighten that up damn what's going on there I'll try putting some glue on the, the blast bag itself directly is trickier than the first one. Why is that not sticking? I might just have to hold it for a little bit. Thin can get in the gaps. Is that clean? Needs a little bit of a opening up. Okay, that did seem to help. I might reinforce them both a bit with a little more glue.
try and do this where you can see it. There we go. And I just got that handrail to put back in place. You can see it's a little bent out there. Even after burning it, left a little bit of residue that time. Uh, that first dollop of thick glue is starting to get a little too thick, a little dry. Okay, I think that's got it. Oop, nope, this part has come loose over here. Alright, another dab of thick. I might need to clean my glue palette soon. Uh, it's just a big tile. It's tiles are good because it doesn't absorb any of the glue so it stays um, more liquid longer longer. Um, but I'm never yet never use all of the glue so it leaves little dry patches of glue everywhere so I'm starting to run out of room. Trying to scratch the excess off on a tile on the edge of the tile is it's faster to just do it like this. It's more glue than I really needed, but. I guess I want to be sure this time. Come on. Oh, stick, damn you. Okay, there we go. So that railing's now in place. Yeah, that looks good. All right, there we go. Our second turret complete. Let me just check those barrels. Uh, a little bit off, but nothing you'll really notice. All right. Let's put that aside. So what I thought I'd build next is this. It's the uh, the catapult that was used to launch the ship-based aircraft from uh, to give them a bit of extra speed to take off. As you can see, there's quite a few parts involved. So. This could be an interesting thing to build today. Um, let's get started. So the parts are around mid 400s. So are they on this sheet? They're the 700s, so no. Ok, 
Okay, what are these? 500s? Ah, I see the parts. Yep, that's uh, that's them there. It's kind of a weird name, catapult. You might think of something medieval when you, you hear that name or that word, but this is definitely a lot more modern than that. So I th believe, and I only looked this recently, but I believe that they used gunpowder charges um, to get these things firing. Um, and in the instructions, you can see it looks like there's underneath some sort of piston there so perhaps it was a, a barrel that had gunpowder ignited within it and that caused pressure to push it forward i don't exactly know the me mechanics of it but uh it's a beautiful little bit of detail and i probably should really do some research into that to, to learn how it works so we want oh great they've given us an option 453 or 454 Okay, I'll have to have a look at them and see which I like better, if there's a preference. Um, and now that I think about it, Congo only had one catapult. Um, the Mogami, which I built previously, you can see that in my About page uh, on the, the stream. Uh, the Mogami had two catapults, and the Yamato, which I'll be building in the future, has two. But I think it was an addition that came a little later with the Congo, I'm not entirely sure. But it definitely only has one. So I do get a choice based on those two. I'm not sure which version is which. I might just choose by whichever it looks like it has the most detail. So all right, I'll take off 452 first. And it looks like these parts go... So this goes on on top of that I think and the bottom stays open let's see no the bottom is closed that is the bottom okay so I will won't put this piece on until I've done all the internals here because I'll need to be able to access inside there to do those so I'll leave that piece on the fret for now so it's Four, five, two, and it's pretty obvious because it's the only one of that type of shape. detail on these are, are beautiful. I don't know if you can see all those rivets that are etched in there. It's just incredible. This is one of the bigger pieces. It's going to be a little bit tricky though because as you can see from the shape of this line here I'm gonna to have to bend this bottom piece up into there and then fold that up up into there oh, sorry about the, the camera I um, I've tried to work out how to keep the screen on and I thought I'd figured out something but apparently not um, I'll just have to remember to keep an eye on it every now and then to make sure that I know when to reset it all I have to do though is half press the shutter so I can reach forward and do that no, not too not too much difficulty. Okay. Let's just press in here a little bit, just sort of start it off in the right direction. Can't get my fat fingers in there. All right, 
right so these two here spring out a little bit so I'm gonna have to is it how many times I have to bend that is it just one bend I'm looking at the screen because it's a bit easier to see sometimes here yeah, that looks like it's just one continuous angle so if I get that bend right then I can just glue those two pieces on and that starts way back here a little too much ah if I bend this down I can rest that on the, the bench that will help so that just goes straight down a little bit further Yeah, that looks about right. You can just see that bent up piece at the end there. Maybe I should glue that together first. Yeah, because then I can just use the thin glue with capillary action to absorb into the gaps. So I'll start with a bit of thick. Okay, that looks good. That meets up at the bottom there now. Nice and tidy. Yeah, when I burn the glue off these days, or tonight, it's uh, leaving a bit of residue on it. I'm not sure why it's doing it this time and hasn't others. This one should be easier because it's already in the right position. I just touch it down. All right, there we go. Now to run some glue along the inside corners, um, just to solidify it a little bit. goes nicely a little bit more all right and we'll do that bit at the back that's just a 90 degree fold finish that with a bit of glue just to hold it in not too much try and touch it on the inside of the join and now just hold it in still not quite sticking There we go. Now the other corner. I still got glue on. I might have enough. Oh, 
Come on. It's like watching glue dry, isn't it? <laughs> Very entertaining. Stick down you. Hmm. There we go, finally. Look at that gorgeous detail on that. Can you see? You can see the bigger holes, but you can't really see the tiny rivets. Let's see if I can get up close. Okay, where does it focus here? Can't get it much closer, I guess. Where is it? Okay, there we go. So you, at this end here, there's a whole lot of rivets running down the bottom. There you go, you can just see that in the reflection there. I just love that detail. That's why I try to keep the glue as clean as possible so that it doesn't obstruct that, doesn't cover it up. All right, now we've got our little boat shaped frame. I need to start putting things in it. So what have we got? We've got frame parts, I suppose. We've got a little wheel that goes on the end. Oh, <laughs> let me get you in focus again. Okay, so we've got um, up here these frame pieces to go in. There's three of those. Uh, we've got a little wheel here that goes on the end there. These look like pulleys with wheels on. A little ledge on each side, which I think might have been where crew stood. Not sure where 462 goes, just these bent down. We've got three brass pieces, catapult gas tank it's called, and that's 17A, and that's 17A here. Oh, the three of them are stuck together. Ah, okay. Not sure if you can see there, but I've got a stick three tiny little brass barrels into a triple piston type thing or well, it says a gas tank so oh, maybe this was compressed air rather than gunpowder yeah it says gas tank there all right um so this piece goes here after this, I think. But where does uh, 462 go? 462. Oh, it's connected to these. Gosh, it doesn't really show how. There's just a little dot there and a dot there. So these fold down like legs. Oh, okay. So this will go in between two of those tubes and it will sit on these feet all right well let's glue these pieces in first so four five 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 six and five seven that's one of the things i also enjoy about model shipbuilding is that i get to sort of learn how these things worked just by looking at them up close. And that's something that uh, I find interesting. Alright, 
out. So these ones have got little tabs on one side. And I think those tabs go down. It's not a really obvious, um, it's not very clear in the diagrams, the resolution of the photos or the print isn't really good enough to be able to show that in, in detail. Um, and so it's smallest to biggest front to back. Oh, okay, if I look in here, you can see you've got um, little gaps there. Let me see if I can, there we go. You can see them there. They are where these go. Oh, and they've even got a long, long gap here and a short gap there which matches up long gap, short gap, and the same here, but it's reversed. So I guess these go in opposite directions. All right, so I should just be able to put some glue down the bottom there and put it on there. one and that's two and I didn't quite have enough glue on my applicator for the third one as well so I'll do that now This is closer to me. Here we go. Straighten that up. I'll come back and put a little bit of extra glue in the corners of those, but for now, they're holding. I'll bend that back a little bit. There up. Now just a little tiny touch in the corners. More residue gets in the way. I almost need a, a thinner needle. This is a sewing needle. I might see if I can file it down even finer. Just because the size of the drops of glue that I get on this, at this scale, it's just a bit too much. Okay, that's done. Alright, I need to do the uh, the tubes next, so that's brass 17A, so I'll have to get out the, uh, the legend for that, where did I put those sheets up here, okay, that's what I need. So they're three equal diameter, equal length parts, and they're quite thin. So I need to look for a long piece of brass. Aha. Uh -huh. I think that's it there. Well, you'll see it when I get it out. Yep, that looks 
looks right. Yeah, you can see they're just rounded off on the ends. So they, they are really gas cylinders. I could put the gun barrels in the uh, blast bags back in here now. Alright, let's have a look. I'll just double check. So 17. Yeah, that's a match. They've even got tiny little ribs around them. Now, I'm, I'm going to cut these, but I'm definitely going to have to file them because there's going to be a burr in between them. Uh, I'll start with a slightly thicker file because uh, the burrs are sizable. And finish that off with a finer file. excess off it's a little bit longer on the end there uh, we're listening tonight again to the world of warships soundtrack the uh, study girl mix I guess it's their, their chill ones it's doesn't give me copyright strikes and it's theme appropriate and it's quite cool listening to last one I need to finish that off any finer. The size of it, it's not going to be visible. Alright, so how shall I do this? Oh, Arky, leave it alone. Alright, I think what I'll do is so I'll put two side by side, glue those together just with a drop of glue in the middle and then put the third one on top okay they look pretty parallel by a fraction of a millimetre. Trying to get them flat. Alright, good enough. I wonder if there's enough 
wet glue left on there I can just drop this on Okay, I think we're good. Now I'm just going to put some extra. Oh, it's a little bit off. Uh, I'll put some thin in between. Uh, well, it's not perfect, but it's going to be on the inside of that frame you saw a moment ago. So I don't think it's going to be particularly obvious. I just like to do things as well as I can. Come on, break that surface tension. I think that got it in. There we go, that went in. Just to be sure, I'll put a little bit in the first one again. All right, that's pretty secure now, even if it is a little bit uneven. So let's do the stand for that, which was 461. No, 462 it falls down to that little stand. Now this is a tiny piece. There it is. Oh, I see they've got little curved shapes there for the cylinders to go in. I don't know if it'll fit now that I've stuck them. I can always just sit it on top. flip that over and these go on top yeah they're definitely not sitting in the uh, little channels for them but that's okay okay I'll just straight up glue it on it'll look just as good if it's even visible at all to the tweezers uh, and that's wiped off on the paper and the tweezers <laughs> alright let's try that again
definitely in the wrong spot. It's so hard when the tweezers are sticky. Sometimes I just got to get my fingers in on it. super thin to just seal it in place uh. that will hold it uh, it's not center but honestly I don't care that much it's close enough Fiddly. So I think, yeah, that goes into the catapult next, and then four six one goes over the top of it. Then I've just got the two wings to go on. The um, pulley at the front then I can stick on the top and the mount all right so we got a little line there a little line there and I presume that's where the piston goes no that's where 461 goes so the piston goes in between them, I think. All right. Um, I think I'll just dip the legs into the glue for this, rather than try and apply it with the, the needle. Okay, fingers crossed that stays. Whew, gets sweaty under this band. So next is 461. I'll just turn that up so you can see it. It's all going to be covered up in a way. Uh, still see through the sides, which will, you know, give it depth, but. Uh, it's not going to be very obvious. These wheels look amazing too. How, how much detail there is in them. Let me show you. focus there we are look at that you can see that the spokes are inside the rim on a piece of brass that's you know half a millimeter or quarter of a millimeter thick that's so impressive All right. 
it's bending those over. Actually, I might put a drop of glue inside there just to stop it from springing back up. Uh, glue's getting a little dry. Okay, that's one side. Try and fold it symmetrical so you can see right through the spokes. Alright, that looks good. Now, which end does this piece go? Okay, so the bent arm goes to the front and it's just in front of that. <laughs> you couldn't see a thing. Sorry about that. I keep forgetting. Alright, so this bent arm goes in here ahead of that hole. Uh, I might put some fresh glue on. This track's a little bit too religious for me. Too church sounding. Oh, it doesn't go over the top. No. Because I didn't assemble the, the gas tubes properly. There's not enough room for these to sit over the top. It can go beside, that's fine. If it'd stay. And that doesn't look too bad. Let me turn that up so you can see. Yeah, stuck it to the paper. You can see it in there. Oh, there you go. That, that angle looks good. You can really see how it's come together there. Not perfect, but good enough. Let's uh, scrape that paper off. All right. Next we have the, we'll do the front wheel. So the front, front pulley, that's 451. There we are. Oh, 
let's flip that over and fold. I don't think I'll put glue on this one because it's quite a small piece so it'll hopefully fold and stay put but I also don't want the glue to clog up those holes for the spokes because then when you paint it it'll just appear to be a solid piece and I do not want that because there's just so much beautiful detail there oh, look it's springing a little bit I might put a tiny little bit of uh, of thin in there come on go in there we go just squeeze it closed let it dry and there we go all right so yep that goes right in the end there you have to do this off camera because the angle to hold it is not going to work so that you can see. go inside no so let's put on the top so that's four five three or four five four let's see what the difference is that's these two four five three and four five four Okay, I like this one better because it's got this checker plate pattern which will look fantastic when it's painted. Put some, uh, some wash in there and that'll really bring out those details. Now I believe this piece just stays flat. I don't have to fold it at all. Where is it being held? Uh, here. Yep, that top edge is flat. I guess that makes sense if you're going to be launching aircraft from it. You want it to be flat. So that goes on like that. So this is going to be potentially tricky to align. Side to side shouldn't be too bad. I can just pinch it with the tweezers and that'll center it. End to end might be a little tricky. doesn't actually show this assembled but yeah this is the right end not really on but it's on enough 
but I can run some thin CA glue through there and that'll hold it. I really love the thin CA, the way it just flows to fill and immediately sets. I mean that is a problem sometimes but in these circumstances yeah it's great it goes exactly where you want it to right in the gap that's dried already on the tip Dries so fast, got to keep loading it up. Okay, that's one side. This side's already looking pretty good. I think that's good. Oh, there's one gap there. All these gaps show up a lot when you come to paint it. It's uh, obvious where they are. All right, now I'm just gonna sand off the top of that to get rid of that excess glue okay sanding's not working because there's a lip just a small one so scrape it with the oh that's coming off easily great Once again, the, uh, the paint really shows up any surface variation, so I want to try and get rid of as much excess glue as I can, especially around all these in in intricate details and the, the brass pieces. Come on, there we go. Uh, that's loosened up a little bit. <laughs> a bit of the glue I scraped off went inside. Got it. Maybe sanding this side will work. pretty good that side already looks good <laughs> all right let's stick on the wings you can see they will go in these little grooves there a bit hard to see I guess you can see that little little gap 
running up and down there. So, from this orientation, 458 and 459. I'll do 459 first, just because it's the side it's facing. Even these little pieces have got tiny little checker plate textures on them. Can you see the, the dots? There, that shows them. I think I'll dip this piece in the glue. That might be easiest. Yeah, that worked beautifully. All right, that's one side. Uh, this side's going to be a little trickier because I don't want to lie it down on the freshly glued part. I might have to just hold it up while I glue it on. Gotta make sure I hold it so that the uh, the dots are on the right side, so like that. I just missed that a little bit. It's not perfectly symmetrical. You can see it uh, bends out a little bit at the bottom. But I don't think that matters too much. I'm not going to be that fussy. Alright, nearly there. We now have this piece, 463. We are now working on the uh, the pivot point where the catapult would rotate in order to get to a favorable favorable position to launch an aircraft. And into that goes a brass piece. And it goes, actually I'll, I'll stick this on first, I think. Yeah, I need to flip that over. Uh, this is going to be tricky. I need to align the checker plate that's visible from the other side and the circle so it's fitting inside here. Okay, that rotational alignment's good. And that positional alignment needs to go a little bit that way. No. Nope. It's already so already hardened. All right. Well, it's it's so close, and I don't think it's going to stop the uh, brass part from going in there. So the brass part I need is sixteen A. Where is sixteen A? It's that bit. So we're looking for a long piece and two small bits on the end. I may have already cut that off. 
for one of the parts I've made before. But let's see if I can find it. It's here. Yep. I think I see it. First thing I looked at. Alright. Does this match? No. It doesn't. It's very close, but those two end pieces, the very narrow end, these parts, they don't match these. Let's see if there's another piece that might fit better. It may just be there's a slight inaccuracy in the drawing or in the milling. No, I don't think it's any of those. It's definitely not the barrels. There's more barrels for the secondaries. Life rings, anti-aircraft barrels, because they're small. Um, and it's none of those. So I guess, unless there's another piece, is there any of these? No. I think that must be it. It's close, but close enough. All right, so I'll put all these back. And I'm only cutting off the end piece here. the bag I took that from. I can go in here. Now I don't think I have to file this one. Let me just put this away first. Um, because this side just sits in there or glues there and this side the top that goes into a hole on the hull so uh, yeah it doesn't need to be cleaned I'm a little bit unsure a bit worried about the amount of play there is there because I want to make sure that this is right in the middle because otherwise the pivot point will be off center and that'll look a little bit weird okay probably easiest to apply the glue onto this part flip it over and put it on here okay that looks about right that's pretty central and there we have it a catapult so let's get the hole out and that goes on the back here which I currently have covered in mask, masking tape. I really should clean that up. So, because this is going to be covered when it's on, I'm just going to poke a hole through here. 
so it doesn't matter if this isn't masked but this sits on here like that so now we are on the flight deck so you can see the um, the linoleum that covered the flight deck there and so this um, would pivot left and right depending on the best way to launch the aircraft and you might just be able to see through the um, the masking we've got these rails here and more of them come off this way they are the rails that would um, carry the planes from their storage places and load them onto the um, the catapult now when I say storage uh, keep forgetting about this camera I really need to fix that or get a different camera um, so I believe the aircraft were just stored on deck so there'd be one here and one here and they would maybe they would even carry one on the catapult so potentially a total of three aircraft um, and they would launch them out to launch them out this way or out this way and then if they wanted to launch a second one they'd swing this around here to point up this uh, hidden track here which is beneath the masking tape and they'd then push the trolley that held the plane back onto here and the main mast which is back in this location would then swing around pick up the aircraft and drop it onto the onto the catapult for launch all right well i think i shall finish up there now but let's just put these together so we can see what we completed tonight as you can see it's a uh, very cozy up here between the uh the catapult and the the turret not much room there not much wiggle room designed just to fit um and unfortunately the uh they're not going to fit in the screen at the same time maybe if i turn around like this oh, it's a little bit small anyway uh i'll put this here focus it and that can be one shot and i'll move this here and i'll take another screenshot from there and i'll stitch the two together and make that the thumbnail <laughs> for the youtube version um, so yeah, got a little bit done tonight. Just those bits that you can see on screen there. It wasn't a huge amount, but uh, I was just feeling like a quick stream. So um, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, stay tuned to watch the continued progress. I've got lots and lots of little bits and pieces that need to go onto the deck still to make. So uh, lots more to talk about and stream. So uh, thanks for coming. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I will look forward to seeing you next time.